Hi guys, I'm Bex and welcome to Trista Bites. Today I have with me two guests. I have Elliot from Retro Future. Hello. And I have Quang from Asobi Tech, who you might recognise because he's the man with all the retro handhelds that made me do a three hour live stream because he said he wanted to open just some of the ones that weren't well, Nintendo. I didn't expect it to be three hours, but it just kind of turned out that way. So, because obviously I'm so grateful for not being able to pee for three hours, I've invited him back and brought Elliot along as well. And we're going to be looking at, just because, animal-themed retro handheld consoles. So, it, it's, got, it's got a joint theme, however, at the same time, completely random. So, I'll start off with my one, just, just because. Um, we've got both versions of it, and it is the Atari Lynx. Atari like cat names are for consoles and um, TV or character based names for the processors like the Jaguar with the Tom and Jerry processors and the Lynx had one which was called Susie. I don't know why though. It was released at the end of 89 in the States and 1990 I want to say everywhere else and it's awesome because it's the first 16 bit colour screened handheld and it's over 4000 colours because again awesome. The screen, yeah, it wasn't amazing, but they did improve it on the squish down model too. They made the backlight better and they made the sound stereo because I think the first one's just mono and they definitely made it stereo at some point for the model too. I picked the Lynx over the other animal handhelds just because I love Atari. The size of that box. Look at it. It's a bit of a beast, isn't it's it? It's bigger than I am and that's because it's better than me. Um, it's definitely got a higher pixel frame rate and better memory. It's very American, it's, you know, bigger is better. It is, and the second box is, is so much dinkier by comparison. If they couldn't get the biggest market share, they were having the biggest share <laughs> of the shelf space. This that's is true. marketing Maybe that's 101. what they were going for. Yeah. It is true, if you have bigger boxes or more, it's why, uh, like, you know, different companies have millions of variants of the same product, it's for the shelf space. And same with the, the PC Engine in America, is the Turbo Graphics, it's a huge box. Huge. Uh, the Nintendo obviously came, was, was the Famicom, it was a mm. huge box again. Uh, in, Amer in America, it very much, it was, if you were paying for something, you wanted something bigger. Bigger is better, and you were paying quite a lot for this as well, it was yeah. 180, I think, when it came out, and that's in 89. And that was the same year as the Game Boy, so I think they needed to just try and eclipse it because they'd had two months of Game Boy sales they were trying to go up against. Yeah. Actually, go, do you want to open this one for you? that one? All right. And I'm going I'm to open this one. Yeah, I'll yeah, pass you some of the games. Have you played any of these? I have. Which, which of these have you played? What's your um, favourite? I've played Hard Driving. Uh, that looks... Oh no, and I played Pac-Man, of course. Yeah. But um, out of these, I don't know, is that sealed? Of course you have a that sealed one, game. That one's sealed, yeah. Um, <laughs> so we'll be opening <laughs> that. <laughs> Screenshots on the back are kind of deceiving because the colours are so down from the screen. So that it was optimistic screenshotting they put on the back. But you can see the difference between the two units and they're both awesome. But you know, the, thing is, the, the thing about portables, um, handouts, they're meant to be portable. Four like, batteries. <laughs> He's testing. Oh look at that, look, it's portable. Portable. portable, convenient, portable, and an anti-mugging kind of tool because it's basically a bludgeon. And that is like, I don't even feel like it's there. <laughs> oh my god, it goes further down. There you go. Look at that. Look, I'm off. It's, it's like you've never had it, you know, yeah, you wouldn't tell. Elliot, Elliot's proven that the Lynx is links. entirely handheld. But they put a lot of thought into it. Like yeah. The fact that you can use these either way up. And they put two sets of buttons. There on. are actually a few games that play vertically. Um, I believe Gauntlet's one of them. Oh yeah, of course. And the other one, so you think you can play Berkeley. So either left-handed or right-handed. The comics calculator, which means you can connect 16 of these together for 16 player action. Do you know, did you, did anybody know 16 people with these back in the day? Did anyone know one person with one of these back my, in the my day? My brother Very had good one. question. Your brother had one. My brother had one, yeah. Did anyone else have one? No. no. Did you have one? No, I, I, I had the Game Boy, my brother, my younger brother had the Lynx, and my older brother had the Game Gear. I wanted these things so badly I would have, but I loved what Atari and I'm the only person thinking? in the world that bought the Jaguar so I wanted the like Lynx obviously. like a recipe for jealousy right there. Yeah obviously the Game Boy was the best one by far <laughs> <laughs> regardless of it being colour or not it had the best games. And I mean the Lynx is in some ways the better machine but the Game Boy is just more iconic and had so many it games. Just you know no regardless of tech, technical specs it's the game that make the game uh, make the console. If you so don't this one's more powerful then? Yeah. This is like the size of a Nintendo Switch. So this is better, not the Game Boy. Settle this for us, man. No, I'm, I'm going with my true heart, which is the Game Boy. <laughs> I feel the pain, I've just been stabbed. Um, one thing that's cool was the cartridges themselves. They're like they're these really little cards. Cute. 
What are they called? Hue cards. Oh, Hue cards are for PC Engine. Oh, uh, these is uh, that not a generic name for? No, that was specifically oh, for uh, PC Engine. Uh, but these are cool. I like these a lot. Um, the fact they were so slim. The fact they just slotted in and they had such a nice, you know, the way they interacted with like this. Wait, which way does those cartridges go in? Face forwards. No, I'll, I'll give you that. You can't actually see the name of the game when you put the cartridge in. They could have put the artwork on the other side. Look how loud this speaker is. Sorry. <laughs> Can your Game Boy do that? No, your Game Boy can't do that. This is a party. Party in your pocket? Yeah, we've proven that. No innuendo intended. Saved. Alright. Saved. I think the, the artwork's superior to Game Boy games. Point right. in the Lynx's favour. Not that this is supposed to be the Lynx versus the Game, game Boy version of Ninja Gaiden has the same box art. Oh, does it really? Yeah. Well, fine. <laughs> that neatly moots that point. But moving on, what have you got to show us? Which animal have you gone for, Quine? Well, I am a fan of swans. They are elegant. They scream gaming high octane action. Yeah, yeah. And uh, they're just beautiful animals. What you a know. segue. Yeah. I'm a fan of swans. It's yeah. a brilliant segue. Yeah. It's, so, we totally have a script. So Bandai, <laughs> um, Bandai, they uh, managed to get hold of Gunpei Yokoi, who uh, is famous for obviously the Game Boy and the Virtual Boy. Uh, once he le left Nintendo in shame for making the, the Virtual Boy. Um, and he created the, the Wonder Swan. They released a few of these. This is a 16-bit handheld. Uh, there's a black and white one, there's a colour one, and there's also the Swan Crystal, which is also colour but with a better screen. These take one um, one battery, you can take them out, you can show the people. You like the Wonder Swan as well, don't I, you? I think the Wonder Swan is probably one of the best consoles. It is, I, I just went for the, the Lynx because it's Atari, but actually the, the Wonders one, if I can actually open if, the box. If the Wonders that one had a backlit screen. Oh no, I'm opening that. the wrong side. This happens every time. <laughs> you in boxes. Me and, me and opening packages. <laughs> so Marlo failed to open a box again. The Wonders one was, yeah, it's made by the same genius that brought us the Game Boy in. It feels design-wise like it's just the natural air. It was the last console he designed, I think, as well. It was released by Bandai in 99, and then the colour one's 2000, and the crystal one was a couple of years after that. And it was almost brought to the States by Mattel, but that didn't happen, so that was a shame. And it just, like, it was cheaper than the Game Boy, but it just didn't get the same kind of market share. And I think it was the last console that Bandai did as well. They just gave up on handhelds, which is a shame. And I just think it's better than the Game Boy. It's, like, to hold it so much nicer, and the controls are nicer, and it's got that ambidextrous thing going, like the Lynx has as well, which is just really cool. You can play, play uh, in a vertical format as well. And as you can see, the buttons here, uh, which is a D-pad and also has buttons. It is a seriously beautiful piece of design. Kind of like they took all the learnings from the Game Boy and you put it the, into Well, it's it. the same guy. Come, come yeah. I mean, I, but I you think can like, see the evolution. That was unheard of. Yeah, it's crazy thin. And it runs off of one AA battery, which is another thing that's unheard of. So, um, these were released only in Japan, unfortunately. Uh, we never got them over in the West. Uh, a lot of the games are Japanese only. There's a lot of text, different ways of But there are also lots of good arcade based games. There's a Ghost and Goblins, I believe, mm -hmm. uh, and a few other ones. Uh, one of the big ones is Judgment Silver Sword, which is an incredible shoot -em up. What do you know about this, Elliot? So this, not only is like probably the most expensive game that you can buy on the Wonders One, there was a software for your PC with this, and, the, and it came with a blank um, cartridge, and you designed the software on your PC, flashed it onto the cartridge and then you could play your own games and then they held a competition of who could do the best game. Mm -hmm. This one. Did so. And um, it became a retail game. But I'm going to keep this. This is you done for the rest of the video, isn't yeah. it? You're just going to be playing Yeah, you this. guys keep going on. So yeah, that's the banner. One, one the swan. Um, I, I have no idea why it's called a swan. Swans can break your arm with a single wing. So maybe that's why it's because the swan is actually the most hardcore animal. Like it could take the lynx, apparently. But could it take a duck? That's the question. Could they that is the question. Look at that seamless segue. Could a oh, swan oh, take on about... <laughs> a duck? So the next one we're going to look at is something quite close to my heart, and that is the, uh, the Mega Duck, also known as the Cougar Boy. So the Mega Duck was the um, European release. It was released in the Netherlands. It was released in France. It was released in Germany. 
and I think that was actually it. And then this one was the Brazilian release. It actually has almost the same specifications as the Game Boy. Almost. <laughs> almost. And the screen almost. lets it down. Show us the Koo Boy and explain why this is better than, than the Lynx and the Swan and why it would win in a fight. Well, first of all, it was like 10 years prior to the Wonder Swan and the... Um, it probably came out at the same time as the Lynx, 1993. 1993. So, um, yeah. Wow, this is in extremely good condition. So <laughs> the... I see some jealousy going on here. <laughs> That screen is He fun. may rob you. Um, <laughs> one of the slight issues with, with these things is the everything they use, and I believe, but please don't correct me on this, the Cougar Boy, everything was even cheaper than the um, European that. releases. Yeah. So the screen, because obviously, not to go into like, this is going to bring up some controversial stuff. In the Brazil, they wanted to make it cheaper, so it was more affordable Accessible, for people. Yeah. And this actually, in, in Brazil, was even st selling well in Brazil when the DS came out. This lasted wow. for a very, very long they time. They managed to get hold of the market share with the lower price point. They, yeah. they did the, the cunning business plan. It's a shame they couldn't make the D-pad usable, really. Yeah. I do know in Brazil, there's still fans of the Mega Drive and the Master System. That still sells well to this day. Yeah, and mm. PlayStation. Yeah. All, all of the old they're games. They're ahead of the curve because yeah. Retro's back in. So they're actually much cooler than us because yeah. now we're all doing the same thing over here. So I don't know that you can feel it's so the chunky. on that. It's like, I've heard one of these before when we did the, the unboxing stream and it just, it literally has the worst D-pad ever made. It's just, because it's oh not God, even across. Sealed batteries, man. And unused sealed, like sealed batteries. Fake Duracell. Unused Not headphones. Duracell. Those look slightly like they might be da dangerous. The shape of them isn't They've quite... They've fallen over time. I'm going to let uh, go of those. These are the original headphones that are now disintegrating. Well, disintegrating headphones. This is a true collector's item. A thing of beauty. It's only aged like a fine wine, as you can tell. Beautiful, big, unusable buttons. Um... A, a, a gorgeous logo that could be a cougar or could just be someone. I think with this, they were definitely going for links. Yeah, naming wise, convention wise. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, well, it's they a big, big the cat. Mega Duck with the Wonder Swan. Yeah. Big cat. How yeah. is it cougar bigger boy. than the Lynx? Well, Cougar Boy, it's like Game Boy and yeah. Lynx having a fight. Whereas a Mega Duck is like a Mega Drive and a Wonder Swan having a fight. Who knows? And both failing. Right. So <laughs> this, this is um, the games. These are like the cutest little boxes as well. They um, are absolutely adorable. How many of, of these have you played? I've played almost all of them. Some of the um, some of the Mega Duck games are actually incredibly um, good, but the screen quality lets them down a lot. Snake Roy is um, just the game Snakes, which is on like Nokia, but with a backstory about how a king was turned into a snake. And a terrifying piece of cover artwork that makes me not want to look at the box, and I don't even want to know what's going on in the background there, because that's just wrong. Papa Knight is Bomberman, direct ripoff. Street, of course. Street Rider is probably just... A rip off of a Game Boy racing game. <laughs> this is the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. Suleiman's Treasure. But it's got like a monster, what the hell is that? And a guy with a, so weird. a gun with a string. Is that supposed to be the bullets coming out of it? The game and is like the hardest thing. A dinosaur thing to work out. with dragon wings and. <laughs> Black Forest Tower is an incredible game, but because the screen on the game, on the um, console is so hard to see, you can't actually tell what's going on. It looks a lot like Zelda, it's just like an adventure kind of similar esque game. I have no idea what that is. <laughs> it, it again <laughs> looks. I don't even want to know what that is. Like I think Terrifying. it's best off we don't know. Look at that. That's like Thomas the Tank Engine after five years on heroin. We don't want that. An incredible console, sold really well. Extremely hard to get a hold of now. They're like good, two hundred quid for a box one. Um, yeah, also incredibly terribly designed with a screen that apparently makes some of the good games unplayable. Yeah, I, I mean that is it. You can actually emulate this, um, these games, I can't remember what the emulator is called, but if you want to actually experience the games in all their glory, emulate them. Rather than getting the console they were designed for. Exactly. Sound advice here from the retro future, don't actually buy it, just emulate it and then you might be able to play the games. Yeah. Other than that. It's 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 wonderful and um, it's definitely part worthy of being part of the pile of animal retro handheld consoles. Um, partly because it's literally one of the only ones we could think of. But thank you for joining me and sharing your your, your memories and your your crazy amounts of knowledge you have on these things. Um, so you can check out. This is the only time my knowledge of this actually is useful. <laughs> Any other time, it's just like I'm single. No one cares. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs>
<laughs> right, anyway. So thank moving you. Moving swiftly on. Segwaying swiftly on. Um, thank you for joining me, guys. And you can find Quang over on a Sobitech, yep. as his branded t shirt says. You can check out Mama Castle. I did a video with them recently and all of the other awesome stuff he does. Plus, he has an entire house that literally has no furniture, no beds. It's just full of piles of retro games and retro consoles. Yep. And you can, of course, check out Elliot over on the Retro Future, where he covers all kinds of awesome things and terrible things and brilliant things yeah awesome um, is not the right word <laughs> so so good they're bad things and um, now you actually know what his face looks like because you don't really even show your face over on your channel don't often I don't but we've managed to get him in front of the camera which is pretty awesome we'll put links to those guys in the description below links links <laughs> ah yes cunning we'll put... totally did that on purpose links, links. And, uh, yeah this has been great fun thank you for bringing this stuff it's awesome i wish i could steal it all from you and of course guys if you like what you see here please subscribe to my channel and these guys as well if smash you've got the bell. smash them yes that is the current terminology i smash wish i were as cool as you to know to say that yeah, smash the cool like one. button i've never actually asked anyone to smash my bell but <laughs> it just sounds too much like a euphemism i just can't yeah. do it and if you've got any of these or if you've played any of these or you just want to know more about them please comment below and ask us questions yeah, and we will write hopefully reasonably sensible replies but thanks guys and i will see you next time bye bye i think my hands yeah, are rubbish it's fine. clap your hands so i have sound <laughs> you, know, you know what that's for i was just like clapping i thought we were just clapping applauding the applauding the camera the camera it's the audio thinking it's old school, actually. It's what clapperboards are clapperboards. for. Clapperboards. No. Yeah, clapperboards is yeah. for syncing the sound. Syncing sound. Wow. But I haven't got a clapperboard, so, so you have you to clap. clap. It's like, it's the ghetto way of doing it.